Welcome back to Orca Boats. I'm Rod. So in the last two episodes, I took all of the patterns from the inside of the boat, from the front of the stem, the transom, and so on. I now have all of my patterns with my little tick sticks glued to the plywood. It's now time to transfer all of that information to paper. So let's move over to the drafting board where we can set up and start plotting out the points. It's time to begin the drafting up the body plan from the forms created. So what we're going to do is create ourselves the baseline which will be the line in which the ruler was set on top of the uh, boat. So that's our zero line and we'll come over as far as we can here and draw our vertical line which is center line of the forms and then because this ruler is in metric we'll just have to mark off with the ruler so if that's zero we're going to have to get a vertical line every inch I think that's going to be as many as I'm going to need as far as vertical lines go. Let's set our rule onto here and draw. Move up and draw. Now all of my marks are on this side where I've glued on my pointer sticks but I actually would like to lay this down on the uh, drafting table with the pointer sticks closer to the, uh, to the paper. So what I'm going to be doing is just trying to transfer horizontal and vertical center lines through the plywood simply by taking my small square and marking a line on the edges and line that up dead center with the pointer below. This should be my vertical center line or zero. Then I can take my square and come across that line on what would be the baseline. which was the vertical ruler or the horizontal aluminum ruler that I set above the boat. And then I can go and lay this down on the drafting table. Now that I've got my two inch water line set out and I'm actually using one inch uh, perpendiculars, I'm just going to set out. So I've lined up my center line, my vertical center line, and my baseline up here on one of the lines nice and cleanly and I know that when I set this in the boat that this mark here literally was sitting on the bottom of the boat. As you recall I've laid them all on the top of the planking so these the little dots that I'm making here will also represent paint, uh, planking patterns. So now it's time to mark out the transom with my pattern I made here. So the couple of things that we needed to know and that was the top of the transom which I've marked here was 7 and 5 sixteenths below the baseline up here and we know that this was the center line and was also 5 eighths of an inch away from that mark so we're kind of just going to play with that. So the first thing I will do then is measure down seven and five sixteenths from the uh, top of the or from the baseline. So now that I've got all the points for the transom transferred to the lofting table or drawing board I can actually take this and I don't think I need this anymore I want to get that pattern so I'm going to take this piece off so I've cut that out if I lay that 
on the center line there and the top of it right up on the line I've made, the top of the transom. I think I can get a pretty good representation of the shape of the top of the transom across here. And we can fix this all up with rules later. And with that, I've traced all of my patterns onto here. It's probably a little hard to see on the camera, but there's a lot of points on here. All the points are marked, so I know which points correspond with which pattern, shear lines and center lines. Next, I will just need to take uh, the, the, the measurements that I took from the stem. So I, if you recall, I used a, a zero vertical line, my ruler set up against the stem and measured points away from this, uh, the vertical center line, uh, a zero center line. And so I'm going to plot those onto here just to get a general shape of what the outside of the stem would be. Then I'm going to need to move back 16 inches and mark the other way so I can actually kind of draw a pattern of the stem on here. But right now what I'm going to do is I am going to take this piece of paper off, lay it onto some plywood so that I can uh, put some nails into here and run some bands and see how fair my lines are. Large piece of paper on a scrap piece of plywood here, half inch underneath there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some very fine finishing nails and tap them right into my dots. We're going to start with the transom. Let's see how that fares out according to uh, all my points made. So I've cut a nice thin piece of ash and ash bends so nicely. And then we'll trace the inside of the line and just kind of notching, just pushing that a little bit. I don't know where it ends up on center line, but I think we're pretty close to having a pretty fair curve for the inside face of the transom. And then I think just basically going in order, I'll start off since I'm working from the back, I'll go to form number five, which would be the next one towards the center, finding all the points for number five. All right, the last thing to draw, to draw out will be the profile of the outside of the stem. So I know I've got all my numbers here marked from the, all my water lines starting at zero at the top, which is the baseline where the aluminum ruler was. So right at zero water line, it's zero. So we will go up here and say right at zero water line, will be a mark. So four inch water line down from here, one and three quarters would be right there.
So now that I've got the profile of the outside face of the stem done, I've just taken my inside profile pattern that I made, which is 16 inches back from the zero vertical line, made some plots, I circled them so I know which ones are thing. Well, I know that these ones coming down here were the straight line, so I just used my ruler to draw straight through. And then this is actually the, the shape of the forefoot. Put a couple of nails into there, use my French curve to determine, you know, the, the right spot here for that angle. And then, uh, which is right about like that, drew those lines, curved through with a, with a batten, and did the other end. I put my large piece of paper back on my drafting table so I can start to measure some of the distances of the water lines and of the half breadths away from center line. And we measure up, form number two is right here. And it is three inches, two eighths and a bit. So that's zero feet, two inches, one eighth plus a bit, or a sixteenth. So we're on buttock number eight, which is sixteen. Here's number two. Measuring. We have zero feet. We have six inches. And how many eighths? Exactly half an inch, or four eighths. On buttock number eight, or sorry, nine, measuring up where it crosses, we have again zero feet, eight inches, and how many eighths? Two eighths. Measuring on number, buttock number ten. We have zero feet, 11 inches and one, two, three eighths plus. I'm sorry, two plus. Now, form number two does not cross buttock number 11. So we just measure up for the shear. Shear on number two is right here above baseline is exactly one foot, four inches. How many eights? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus. And that gives us the heights on the buttocks of station number two. And we're just going to run through this whole process and do all of the heights on the various buttocks for all the forms. And then we'll measure out on the water lines on each one to get additional points. Then we'll determine where a diagonal will go. So I have finished measuring all of the measurements up to wherever the intersection is for each one of the forms in the transom on all of the buttock lines mark them all down onto my uh, table of offsets and now I'm working on measuring out on each water line. So what we end up with, you end up with when you're lofting this out full size is you end up with many points across here to be able to create your arc. So right now I'm working on station number three. I have measured out on the shear line and determined how far out it goes out on the shear line. On water line number one Form number three doesn't even cross that. So we're going to go up to water line number two and measure out to station number three where it crosses and it's actually crossing right at 17 inches. So that is one foot, five inches, zero eights. And it looks like we have one foot eight inches and three eighths exactly so one foot 
8 inches, 3 eighths. So I was I worked my way through all of the patterns measuring all the distances on all the water lines and all the buttock lines for all of the patterns and marking them down on my table of offsets. I think that's all we're going to cover in this episode. I've now got the boat upside down. There's some other measurements that I'm going to need to take as far as the profile, the measurements of the keel, the uh, rabbit lines and so on. So stay tuned for next episode and thank you very much for watching. You might want to consider becoming a subscriber. And if you hit that little bell button, you'll be notified of any new videos that are produced out of Orca Boats. Thank